Biopharmaceutics may be defined as the study of the influence of formulation factors on the therapeutic activity of the drug product or dosage form. It involves the study of the relationship between some of the physical chemical properties of a drug and the biological effects observed following the administration of a drug via various dosage forms or drug delivery systems. Almost any alteration in a drug delivery system is likely to alter the drug delivery rate and the amount of drug delivered to the desired place in the body. Pharmacokinetic parameters aid in the design of the dosage form as well as the selection of a route of administration for the particular dosage form in order to enhance therapeutic effect. Different routes of administration will exhibit significant differences in the extent and rate of drug absorption. For example, a drug that's given IV will have a faster onset of action as opposed to a drug given orally. This is because the IV route directly enters the bloodstream, while the oral route has to undergo many other intervening steps like disintegration and dissolution before it can enter systemic circulation. Hence, the IV route will be preferred when a fast onset of action is needed as the drug enters directly into the bloodstream, like in emergency cases, whereas oral dosage forms would be more appropriate in day-to-day -day management and treatment of certain disease conditions as well as acute illnesses. Dosage forms control the rate at which the active pharmaceutical product is released. For some dosage forms, the process may be longer due to the greater number of intervening steps that's required. As a result, the drug released from this dosage form will take longer to be absorbed and most importantly, result in decreased bioavailability. This knowledge therefore aids prescribers and pharmacists in choosing the appropriate dosage form for a particular scenario. For example, giving a patient an aqueous solution as opposed to a coated tablet because the solution has a higher bioavailability and will be absorbed faster and therefore its onset of action will occur at a much quicker rate than the coated tablet. Dosage forms are also designed using different formulation factors. These factors have an impact on the release of the drug and hence the absorption of the drug. For example, enteric coated tablets delay the release of its active drug until it reaches the small intestine. This is used for drugs which tend to irritate the gastric mucosa as well as those drugs which are sensitive to gastric acid degradation. This is especially useful when treating patients who suffer with gastric ulcers. Excipients are included in pharmaceutical preparations to facilitate the acceptability and functioning of the dosage form as a drug delivery system. These excipients confer unique properties to the dosage form that they incorporate it into. An example of an excipient is a flavor, strawberry. By adding a flavoring excipient to the drug, you mask the unpleasant taste of the active pharmaceutical ingredient, thereby improving patient acceptability and compliance. This is particularly useful when children have to complete their course of horrible tasting antibiotics. Dosage forms can also be formulated into immediate release and sustained release preparations, which provide the therapeutic effect immediately over a short period of time or slowly over longer periods of time respectively. However, when excipients are added in the incorrect amounts, it will affect the drug's bioavailability. For example, if an excess of binding agent and inadequate amounts of disintegrating agent were used, this will culminate in a poor therapeutic outcome as a result of poor liberation, disintegration and solubility. When tracking the progress of an orally administrated dosage form, liberation of the active pharmaceutical ingredient from a solid dosage form is the first step a drug undergoes when it enters the body. It is simply the separation of the active from the other excipients. It can be divided into three steps, namely disintegration, deaggregation, and dissolution. Deaggregation is the further breaking up of aggregates into further smaller, finer particles. Dissolution occurs after disintegration and deaggregation of a drug and is where the drug dissolves in gastric juices. The faster the dissolution rate, the faster the absorption of a drug. An increase in drug solubility will result in increased dissolution rate of the drug and vice versa. Drugs with smaller particle sizes and a greater surface area will have a faster dissolution rate and thus a faster absorption rate as well as an improvement in drug absorption. Drug stability in GI fluids is the second main biopharmaceutical property affecting the absorption of an oral solid dosage form. Oral solid dosage forms may destabilize in GI fluids. Chemical as well as enzymatic degradation of drugs can occur in the GIT. GI fluid pH is highly acidic and may cause drugs to undergo pH-dependent hydrolysis, resulting in drug instability, negatively influencing drug absorption. Luminal enzymes like pepsin and proteases degrade protein and peptide drugs in the lumen. Drugs resembling nutrients are also susceptible to enzymatic degradation. The third main biopharmaceutical property affecting the absorption of an oral solid dosage form is drug permeation. 
The rate of permeation across membranes is used to assess oral absorption in humans. Factors affecting the drug permeation include drug dissociation, partition coefficients, pH at the absorption site. The absorption of a weak electrolyte will be determined by the extent to which the drug exists in its unionized form at the site of absorption, drug hydrophilicity. Polar molecules are relatively poorly absorbed after administration. Hydrogen bonding or van der Waals forces. Too many hydrogen bonds within a molecule impede its absorption. Molecular size. Larger drug molecules are absorbed less efficiently. Surface area. Drug molecular weight. A higher oral bioavailability is associated with lower molecular weight. Convective flow or solvent drag. Absorption of water-soluble drugs is increased if water flows from the lumen to the blood, provided that the drug and water are using the same route of absorption. Chemical stability. Chemically unstable drugs are destroyed before permeation through the GI barrier can take place. The following properties will determine the extent of absorption in the human body. Partition coefficient. This is the ratio of the distribution of a drug in lipids as compared to water. An increase in the partition coefficient would result in an increased ability of a drug to distribute into lipid membranes, thus improving absorption. Particle size. A particle may be composed of a single molecule or more than 100 molecules. The larger the particle size, the slower the diffusion, resulting in a predictably slower absorption rate. Degree of ionization. Different drugs are either acidic or basic and are present in either an ionized or unionized form which is determined by their pKa values. In the body, the ratio of ionized and unionized form is dependent on the pH of the surrounding medium. Chemical nature. The chemical nature of a drug is responsible for the selection of the route of administration of the drug. For example, drugs that can't be absorbed through the intestines are administered by the parenteral route, such as heparin. Physical forms. Drugs may exist as solids, liquids, or gases. Gases are more rapidly absorbed than liquids, whilst liquids are more rapidly absorbed than solids. Thus, drugs which are formulated into syrups and suspensions are more rapidly absorbed than tablets or capsules. Lastly, first-pass effect of drugs can be described as the metabolism of a drug into its inactive or active metabolites, mainly by hepatic microsomal enzymes prior to the drug reaching systemic circulation. It is a phenomenon that usually decreases the bioavailability of orally administered drugs. It can also be caused by enzymes found in the GI lumen, gut wall, liver and bacterial enzymes. The science of biopharmaceutics has therefore contributed significantly to the field of medicine in the following ways. 1. The assessment of bioavailability and bioequivalence of new drugs and generic marketed drugs. Two. The pharmacokinetic properties of new drugs as well as new drug delivery systems. 3. Adjustment of the dosage regimen. And 4. The assessment of the pharmacokinetic profile of drugs in disease states and dose adjustment thereof.